U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that Hamas has proposed various changes, some unworkable, to a U.S.-backed proposal for a ceasefire with Israel in Gaza. He also added that mediators are determined to close the gap. Take a listen. We were waiting on one response, and that was the response from Hamas. And as the Prime Minister said, uh, last night we received a response. Hamas has proposed numerous changes to the proposal that was on the table. We discussed those changes last night with Egyptian colleagues and today with the Prime Minister. Some of the changes are workable, some are not. Meanwhile, senior Hamas official Osama Hamdan has denied that the group put forward new ideas. He asserted Hamas's stance that it was Israel that was rejecting proposals and accused the U.S. administration of going along with its close ally. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said that many of Hamas's demands were minor and not unanticipated. While other demands differ more substantively from what was outlined in the UN Security Council resolution. Blinken also met Qatari Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed Al Thani in Doha. After the meet, Qatar's Prime Minister said that the behavior of both Israel and Hamas are being counterproductive to the efforts of a ceasefire. Prime Minister Al Thani, however, assured that there is a clear and firm call to end the war in Gaza. Negotiators from the U.S., Egypt and Qatar have been trying for months to mediate a ceasefire in the war and also free the hostages. Hamas said that it is ready to accept an agreement leading to a permanent ceasefire in Gaza as well as full withdrawal from the territory, reconstruction and release of Palestinian prisoners as well. On the other side, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has repeatedly said that Israel will not commit to ending its war in Gaza if Hamas is not eliminated. Well, as diplomats seek a ceasefire deal, which seems to be in a limbo as of now, Israel's continuing its assault in central and southern Gaza that are among the bloodiest of the war. Israeli forces stepped up air and tank bombardments in Rafah and central Gaza, an Israeli airstrike on a house in Al Nuzeret refugee camp killed three. Palestinian health officials said that six people were killed in an airstrike on Gaza City in the north, and one person was killed by a tank shell in Rafah. On the other hand, deadly violence has intensified along Israel's northern border with Lebanon. Lebanon's Iran-backed militant group Hezbollah rained rockets on northern Israel and this comes day after an Israeli strike killed one of its senior commanders, according to the Israeli military, that is. Well, three waves of around 215 rockets and missiles filled the sky over northern Israel. Hezbollah has also claimed that more than 10 other attacks on the Israeli military, including one with drones. In the ongoing campaign in the Red Sea, Yemen's Iran-backed Houthis claimed an attack on a merchant ship. In a statement, the Houthis said that they had carried out a military operation targeting the Tutor ship in the Red Sea using a naval drone, aerial drones and ballistic missiles. The ship was hit about 126 kilometers southwest of the port city of Hordeda. Now, the U.S. Central Command confirmed that the Tutor had been struck by a Houthi unmanned surface vessel that caused severe flooding and damage to the engine room.